Hello, I'm Paul Lambus and welcome to our seventh episode of CultureScope featured on Cypress Mail's interactive web portal Good Living. Our location for this episode is the village of Kuklia, the very spot where the ancient kingdom of Paliapaphos once stood and one of the most celebrated pilgrimage centers of the ancient Greek world. The moment you step foot into the village of Guglia, you know you have entered special territory. Located 16 kilometers from the city of Paphos, this historical village is one of Cyprus's most important archaeological landmarks. Home to the renowned Sanctuary of Aphrodite, this magnificently preserved site exhibits many interesting finds from the area and portrays how the cult of the goddess of fertility developed into the cult of Aphrodite. A stroll along the narrow paths will lead you to the village square, where local folk potter about amidst gorgeous old buildings restored to their former glory. The central coffee shops and taverns offer an easy-going Mediterranean lifestyle that respects and nurtures timeless traditions. Dedicated to the Apostle Luke, the main church of the village is another testament to the island's religious heritage, retaining an undisputed captivating charm. Dating back to the 12th century, the Church of Panagia of Yedria is an incredibly special place to see. Once a pagan temple which collapsed during an earthquake, this monumental site is surrounded by stone arches on the outside and is a perfect example of Byzantine architecture. Inside the church, one is mesmerized by the impressive icons and frescoes depicting the prophets, the Virgin Mary, the Twelve Apostles and more. Not far from the village, the imposing rock known as Petra Doromiu or Aphrodite's Rock juts out from the sea and marks the spot where, according to legend, the ancient Greek goddess of love and beauty was born out of the foam. Kuklia is also home to international 18-hole championship golf courses, incorporated in breathtaking natural locations near gorges, cliffs and the sea. The island of Cyprus is the perfect choice for year-round golf, and according to many golfing enthusiasts, is fast becoming a golfer's haven. The village of Kuklia offers a wealth of opportunities to explore the island's rich cultural heritage, the hearty hospitality of the local people, the traditional smells and unique customs will give you a taste of authenticity and inspiration. Well known for representing Cyprus in the Eurovision Song Contest in 2016, Minus One is Cyprus's favourite five-piece rock band, playing everything from pop to rock classics, including covers that are rearranged and refreshed, luring one right in with their melodic tunes. Chris, Minus One has already established itself as a popular rock band in Cyprus. How did you all meet and what led you to forming the group? It's, uh, we're talking 11 years ago, so this was, uh, this was a time where most of us, the, 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 the lineup at, at that time was free from any other obligations, any work we had. And uh, we thought it was the perfect time to get into something, at, at the time no English rock uh, was being played on uh, weekends, you know, on good days. Everybody would just throw the throw it on a Wednesday or a Tuesday or a Monday. You know, it's a rock night, Monday night, you know, 20 people if you're lucky. And we thought there was potential there. So we said, okay, Saturday. So we approached a club that was available and uh, we started it and it was a huge success from the beginning. It was um, quite refreshing for a lot of people also to have that option for a Saturday night, you know. So we did that for a few years and um, it, it some lineup changes uh, came up. Andreas had to go to Greece, so uh, we obviously changed our frontman and our singer uh, back then. It led to Eurovision, which uh, was in 2016.
like a man that failed Trapped into the mist of a fairy tale And you know, you know, you know I'm still inside We were approached by uh, affiliates of the CYBC to uh, if we were interested in entering the competition they had that year for uh, for the song contest, we were like, yeah, no, why not? You know, this is crazy, but we like we like doing you know uh, stuff that's uh, we think is crazy. Now looking back, it wasn't so crazy. Of course, it was a great thing, and uh, it's the most amazing experience ever. I mean, we, we get asked that a lot. I mean, how was Eurovision? It's exactly what you would imagine it to be, and and then some. There's a big party, and we are people that take advantage of any party that's going on. So we were, we were in the night parties, and we were in the morning parties, and then we do our thing, you know, because we're good at doing that. Costantinos or Americanos, you moved from the classical to the rock world. What inspired this transition, and has your classical upbringing influenced the group's creative process? I was having classical piano studies since I was seven years old. But, you know, at the same age, kind of started listening to rock music. Uh, Elvis Presley, that was my first ever rock experience, I would yeah. say that. So, uh, but, and, you know, I'm, I'm self-taught on guitar. I, I never had any, any guitar lesson. I love pop music, I love rock music, you know, for live performances. Sometimes we do. In our productions, right? Sometimes and there's some, uh, some, some classical elements. elements yeah, yeah, yeah. Some. so it's it's not irrelevant, you know. It's a lot of things came from classical music, so yeah. Christos, the other singer, approached me when I was in Greece and he told me he wants to do something and Chris was in, so uh, I said, why not? I moved back to Cyprus <laughs> as I was going back and forth in Greece. For 10 years, the same songs. Everybody went out and it was the same songs over and over again. So we wanted to do something more fresh, something different. So, as Chris said, we tried it and it worked. My professional career as a bass player a few years ago with uh, my previous band, Private Garden. Uh, we worked to, for two years, I think it was two years, uh, together. And then I had the opportunity to join Minus One. So I decided to end the band, make a new start with Minus One. I, I thought it was a good uh, idea. We collaborated with Marina Orlova, who is a, who is a friend of of our manager Gian Piero. Okay. Uh, so we got uh, Russian that, actress. That, that connection through there. Basically she had a video clip ready and she didn't know what to do with it. So she wanted to make a she wanted to make something of it. And uh, and uh, she thought of us just to make make the video clip and, and the song and uh, and also playing the video clip uh, of my girl. So yeah we made the video clip uh, we made the song uh, was recorded. It's ready for release. Actually, it's going to be released very soon. Uh, and we hope to, you know, get a uh, breakthrough to to Russia through this because uh, Marina is very well known in Russia. She's she's uh, she's an actress there. She does she's singing. She's she's acting. She's she's doing she's, she's very active. She's doing many stuff. What's next for minus one? We have some more cover songs. Let's finish them. Just put them all together and make an album. And you know, it's, it's called Got It Covered. <laughs> And um, it has like 10 or 11 uh, covers that we've been playing throughout the years. Some of them that which were really important to us. And um, yeah, we're, it's, it's a different kind of thing. You know, m m many people go for, say, you, you, might, you have to have originals out and stuff. Yeah, we've done that in a couple of albums up to now. So this is just a, another thing we're going to do until we have more originals come out. But it's, it's also exciting, I see it, because there's also a very creative part in, in the covers too. You don't, act, you don't just replay what they've done, you recreate it. So it's, uh, it's equally exciting recording 
the covers as it would be maybe. And you make it your own. Yeah. yeah. You know, things are so fragile these days. I, I think play every show as if it's your last, you know, because you never know. It might, might be. Yeah. I might go out here and an old lady might be cleaning her balcony and a pot might <laughs> fall on my head, you know. So if you see that every day now, and as you go, get older, I guess everybody realizes how fragile things are, and especially lately. So yeah, and we do actually. I don't know if they think like that. I do. I think like that. Like play every show as if you do that's because it gives you energy, it boosts your, you know. You actually, if you actually manage to play every show as if it's your last, you just, you rock it every time. It works. Born in England and living in Cyprus, Peter Kibri, better known as comedian Cypriot Smurf, and his alter ego Suvlaki, has been making people laugh with his videos about Cypriot and Greek stereotypes. With his video skits going viral and being shared countless times on social media, it's no surprise that he has garnered thousands of subscribers to his YouTube channel, an achievement he is extremely grateful for and one that has sparked a career in stand-up comedy. Ναι, σου βλάκι το στι, παρακαλώ. Yeah, can I make an order, please? Ναι, πέμ, θέλ. Can I, have you got anything gluten free? Free? Δεν έχουμε πάρε, no free here. Is it, you pay money, right, cash. Peter, you're the amazing talent behind the hilarious Cypriot Smurf skits that have gained you thousands of followers worldwide who cannot wait for the next run. How did the name Cypriot Smurf come about and what was the inspiration behind your alter ego Suvlaki? The name Cypriot Smurf was before I even done comedy. Um, I went to try and live in England for, a, I lasted two months. But when I went back, um, I needed to make a, um, like it's a gift gaff account, it's like a, um, a mobile network and my friend, my cousin, sorry, said he was going to make the account for me and uh, he just gave me the username Cypriot Smurf, that was it. This was before I was doing videos, before I was doing anything. I moved to Cyprus when I was 11 and uh, I was just like looking at everything, seeing the way things uh, were, like waiting for the bus. I used to wait for the bus to go to school for like hours and it would just never show up and then just end up going home. So the bus video was a like a lot it was based a lot on that things that people say or the mannerisms of the older greeks and everything like that it just like made suvlagi and he'll keep changing like even now if i hear something funny that someone says like i asked um someone Buminiskis, and he goes and i'm like that's funny i'm gonna write that down he needs to say that you know so it's just that he just evolves with time he's a real person to me now and to a lot of people and a lot of people prefer him than me so Hey, Charlie, man, how are you? Nothing, man. Just getting ready to go out. No, I think so. How are you, man? Just going downtown. Just finish your ways. Hmm. What are you, man? Just a couple of friends. You know, nothing special. Ah, and that's it, man. That's it. You've certainly come a long way from making videos on Snapchat in your car park to performing live sold out shows to devoted fans as far as Australia. What was the experience like moving from an online to a live audience? I went to Australia and like even here there's so much love and appreciation and in Australia there was I didn't expect it to go to the other side of the world and be welcomed so much and uh, I can't wait to go everywhere else. It just shows me that what I'm doing is good and whatever I do I just want to do it always with respect. I never want to 
you know, disrespect anyone. Even though in comedy it's difficult not to. And I will be getting a bit more risky in the future, I think. I'm going to keep doing the Greek Cypriot comedy, but I want to actually try and make uh, non-Cypriots and non-Greeks laugh and make them understand about, do it in a way that they can sort of relate as well. So, like Russell Peters and so on, you know, so that's my goal. My goal is to be, my dream is to be on Netflix as well. I have my special, so I won't stop until I've done that, really. Suvlak is taking over. Yeah, yeah, hitting my phone. Re, she's calling me. Re, turn the music off on me. One sec. Ella, yeah, yeah. Ella, you come on. I make the one music video now. Ella, no, I don't eat. Ella, Okay, I come after. Okay. Love you too. Bye. Yeah, yeah, cooking me up the good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. The left to go, Suvla, chef, the yarn, the tasty pilaf. Try to make me Braxenia with one Horkadisa. I say I don't like it, but yeah, she has Growing up, um, whenever I was down, whenever I was sad or anything, I would just like turn on Only Fools and Horses, just have it in the background, and it would always make me smile. And the way they made me feel is how I want to make everyone else feel as well. I got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> when I dress up like Suvlagis, I'm a different person. You know, even me, I just try to stay in character completely. And uh, envious and proud of something I created. He's an old school Cypriot with a twist. My dad used to sing when he was young and then he had kids and back in them days you had to work and everything like that and he had to like sort of leave his, I wouldn't say career because he didn't start, sorry dad. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> but his dream, he had to stop, stop his dream to provide for his family. And uh, that's one thing he doesn't want for me. He wants to push me, he wants to support me as much as I can. My sister just spend like, she, I drive her crazy with sending her my ideas and everything, even my brother, they just, they all listen to me. Um, my mum lives in England and she just sees bits and bobs of me, like what I'm doing, and she's proud as well. How did the idea of the biggest frappe in the world originate? I was just shopping with my friend George and I saw a vase. And um, I was like, imagine making a frappe in that. I'm going to do it. And uh, I just got it and I took a picture of it and put it on my Instagram and said, I have an idea. And um, my friend Alexandra from Coffee Suite, uh, he just replied to me, I'm going to sponsor you. And they were like, oh, you should try and put it in for the Guinness Book of Records. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I paid like 10 euro to add it into a new category because they had the categories, but not biggest frappe in the world. We made it, it was like 40 litres and they got back to me and I didn't win because they put they ended up putting me in the same category as the latte I was just off at about 36,000 litres but nearly one <laughs> the biggest ice latte is like 36 and a half thousand litres and mine was 40 and I thought mine was big until I saw that it's huge um, tattoos I went to India as well and that's why I got this because of um, I work with a guy from India, we've worked over 10 years, his name's Alok and he's like my brother and we talk every single day and when I went to India I stayed with him and his family and I went to a temple with them once and the priest put, um, it was like a, a piece of string around and uh, it made me feel really welcome and loved. We stayed in New Delhi, we went to Jaipur and Agra In Agra is um, Taj Mahal and his um, br uh, brother and sister-in-law live there and I went there and um, they gave up their double bed for me like, and they all slept on the floor and I was like no I can't take your double bed but in India their saying is guest is God so that's how they treat their guests like a God yeah. but we all know I'm already a God Google it and a lot of people that follow me I get a lot of messages saying how I've made their day they've had a down day and this that and the other and it makes me feel good to be able to put a smile on people's face and make people um, have a better day. Vladimiros Jodzis is a promising young racing driver representing Cyprus in the international motorsport arena. Currently in NASCAR Euro Series and Formula 3, Vladimiros aspires one day to become a continuous worldwide champion in Formula single seaters and racing cars GTs.
Vladimiros, you've driven both Formula 4 and Formula 3 cars in major worldwide circuits such as Monte Carlo, Abu Dhabi, Monza and Silverstone, recording impressive results. How did it all begin? Everything began from the age of five. My father was always a fan of rally, he was racing in rally. Uh, and one day he suggested me to go to the go-kart track in Larnaca, uh, where there was a race there. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, he asked me if I like it and my answer was from the first time absolutely yes. So we started normally with um, championships in Cyprus, local championships, uh, where I managed after many hours of practice to win seven championships. I started going abroad like uh, in Greece uh, with impressive results and then the best result was uh, uh, in international Euro Cup finals in Italy, uh, where uh, I finished 13th in uh, 2009. My best result was in 2017 at Moscow Raceway. Um, and then uh, after those results, I decided to move up to Formula Renault Euro Cup, where I had the opportunity to drive in Monte Carlo together with the Formula One race weekend. I find on the internet that um, the European uh, Championship of NASCAR was searching for drivers. I took the opportunity to travel to France uh, where I was selected by the organization uh, as their driver with a, a quite good scholarship. Um, and yes, this year I am participating in uh, European Championship of NASCAR. What is your personal code of conduct on the track? I can say that Always I am trying to be consistent, lap by lap, but at the same time to respect the others in the track. So from the age of five, uh, my goal was always to bring the best results that I can. And my motto wa was uh, to never give up, because as many athletes, uh, we have many ups and downs. And personally, the milestone that it takes me uh, to move up from karting to formula category, it makes me to believe to never give up. If you believe it, you will achieve it. Housed in a traditional 1927 mansion in the center of Larnaca, the Giriazis Medical Museum showcases the medical, healing and health history of Cyprus and its strong connections throughout antiquity, the Middle Ages and the Ottoman period. Most items on display originate from the Larnaca area and were donated to the museum, which is a non-profit organization that was set up by doctors, pharmacists, historians and interested members of the public. Something as important as the monarchy simply cannot be allowed to fail. Olivia Colman will return as Queen Elizabeth II as we head into the Margaret Thatcher years for the fourth installment of Peter Morgan's Royal Epic. The Crown is set to return to our screens for its fourth season later this year, and one of the scenes fans are especially looking forward to is the recreation of Prince Charles and Princess Diana's 1981 royal wedding. All the main cast from Season 3 will be back for Season 4, including Tobias Menzies as Prince Philip, Josh O'Connor as Prince Charles, and Eleanor Bonham Carter as Princess Margaret. 
Emma Corrin has been cast to play Lady Diana Spencer, the future Princess of Wales. As Princess Diana became such an international icon during her time in the royal family, her character will, more than likely, be a very substantial part of the new season, as one of the most famous marriages in the world plays out on screen. Stay connected and follow us on social media. If you want to be featured on Culture Scope, contact our production team on the email provided below. Until next time, stay safe and let culture transform your life.